Yeah, welcome back. If you're just tuning in, this is Still Signals here on Lagos Talks 91.3 FM. Yes, before the break, I mentioned that we have a guest and we're talking raising resourceful families. What does it mean for families to be resourceful? What does it mean for you as an individual to be resourceful? My guest is a woman development and homemaking consultant. She is the lead consultant at Premiera Limited, a company in the business of developing women to actualize their potentials and creating solutions that enable women manage their homes effectively. She has a rich career covering different marketing roles in Nigeria and rose to senior management level, leading a team across Central and West Africa in the top multinational. She has an MBA from the Australia Institute of Business, also a member of the Chartered Institute of Marketing UK, and is an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Personal Management in Nigeria. A motivator at heart, she is involved in women empowerment, training, coaching, and advisory. She, through her work in facilitating consumer relations, she has inspired thousands of women across Nigeria to live healthy, provide tasty meals to their families, and be resourceful. When she is not working, you'll find her writing, creating tasty dishes, and spending time with her husband and children. I have on the show today, Ima Bong Martins. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Tell me about the tasty meals that you make. <laughs> <laughs> tasty meals, you know, uh, making meals is actually one of the creating dishes, I should say. It's one of the things that gives me fulfillment. Just seeing the plates of stuff and mm. whether I have a lot or I have a little, I'm able to put it together in a way that's attractive. Mm. Uh, and my family loves to eat. <laughs> Interesting. That's good to know. Now, I, I know there's a tendency to like women or work with women, being that, you know, you're a woman. But you have taken this to another level, another new level with the work that you do. How did it all start? Tell us about it. Well, in my career, somewhere around my career, um, 15 or oh, between 10 to 15 years ago, my job then in the company I was working for had me working with women, helping them um, create tasty dishes for their homes, um, dishes that are nutritious. So that whole journey took me into women's spaces, <coughs> researching, being in women's homes, understanding women's lives and mm -hmm. how we can help improve them. So that cost, um, that cost me to look more into women and I found joy in that space and fulfillment, really adding value to lives. On and on and on that led me to Prenura, where we really help women uh, discover themselves, mm -hmm. run strong homes, uh, and today we are talking resourcefulness. Okay, now we'll get to it. So how would you describe a resourceful family and what does it mean when someone says you're resourceful? Okay, so I'll start from what it means to say I am resourceful. Mm -hmm. Being resourceful is being able to use the limited means, I, I just use everyday English, the limited um, means or resources don't want to use the same word mm. but your limited means to solve your immediate challenges your, your the challenges you have um, I'll give it one interesting definition finding opportunity in adversity mm. so when you're a resourceful family it means that you can work with the, the, the arsenals at your disposal the things that are available to you to solve the difficulties and challenges of your family at that, at that point in time. Mm. Now, we're talking raising a resourceful families, and I want us to start from um, the couple, even before the children start coming. Mm. What are some of those traits or attributes that couples themselves should have before um, they can say, oh, the kids are now here, and we transfer this attribute or traits to them? Um, in terms of resourcefulness, a positive mindset. You must be ready to model that, mm. uh, to think positively this will work we can work at it we can find a way around it because if you're always giving up and kids come there will be a lot of uh, milestones on that journey that uh, will challenge your resourcefulness um, your positive thinking your tenacity your willingness to be good to each other because yeah you must be willing to want to love someone do something for someone to drive you to finding ways around uh, being resourceful. So these are some of the things you, you really need, that strength of will, 
um, readiness to learn, a lifelong learner, because resourcefulness means you're taking ideas and you're matching things together to create mm. solutions. Yeah. And I ask that question because, as we know, children learn by imitation. They mm. look at mommy doing this, they look at daddy doing that, and they try to want to Im imitate these things. So I'm asking, you know, those very key questions. Now, in the context of family, when I hear resourcefulness, what comes to mind for me is um, an all-round individual in terms of morals, in morals on point, wisdom, effective, and efficient. The list goes on and on. Is it possible for couples to be 100% in all of this before the children come? And if not, <laughs> what can they do? I know you're smiling already. What can they do? <laughs> because we are lifelong learners, we keep learning. Resourcefulness actually is learned. Mm -hmm. um, you, 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 we are not born with 100%. You, you start and you learn, you pick up skills. So, no, you can't be 100%. And if you're thinking you're not that resourceful, um, welcome to the opportunity to learn. You can mm -hmm. start today. Uh, so you're not supposed to be 100% at all. Um, and with an understanding couple uh, relationship, you can mm -hmm. help each other build um, what skills this person doesn't have, the other person can give, and together they can grow. Okay, now what I try to do with today's um, <laughs> today's interview is that I'm going to infuse some parenting um, issues into our interview with our guest today. I'll open the phone lines. I have, um, if you have questions, you want to make comments, feel free to call us 009-234-5913-009-191-3913-009-222-0913. So if you have questions, you want to make comments, feel free to call any of the phone lines and we'll be here to take your calls now a lot of the times especially those of us from africa we hear people say that raising a child is the sole responsibility of the mother how do you counter this belief especially if it relates to the raising of a resourceful family where and what is the role of the father I like that um, emphasis you put on resourceful family. Mm. Yes, we know we have different kinds of family, but within the context of this discussion and the time we have to talk, let's go with there's a father, there's a mother, and mm. there are children. A mother is really critical to the raising the child. I mean, if you think about the fact that the mother's role is a nurturing role, mm. and um, the child first interacts in that very close sense with the mom, from giving uh, birth to breastfeeding, mm. you know, and all of those other things. Um, but again, let's look at the word resourcefulness. The father plays a key role in terms, he has his key role in supporting the child in many ways, in terms of um, the means of livelihood, mm. um, in terms of defending the family, in terms of being an example to the child in terms of leading the home there's so much a father brings to the table so um it's it's a, it's parenting is for both parents to actively do um but the mother has a key nurturing role in mm. that okay now let's look at the issue of discipline we have read several threads on social media where people talked about how they were raised and how their parents never spread the rod. Mm -hmm. uh, must, must, must discipline always be about the rod? What are other ways to discipline children? Because sometimes we feel that these stories are read online. It appears that there's some psychological effect it has on the child. When a child has been beaten so much, a child grows up and it doesn't leave the child. So what are some other ways? Must discipline always have to be about the rod? I know the Bible says spread the rod. And, you know, must it always have to be about the rod? And what other means of punishment can parents use to discipline their children? Okay. Um, yeah. And I'm really happy we are talking about resourcefulness <laughs> today. Because, yes, you, like you rightly said, the Bible says spare the rod and spoil the child. But we must look at that rod. The first rod you're introducing to your child, uh, the first uh, means of nurturing or parenting and introducing your child to is that love you give the child mm. and proactive proactiveness is a key element in resourcefulness before that child gets to the point where you have to use any form of rod or you know if figuratively speaking mm. you must have done the proactive part of raising a solid sound upright well-mannered um child Huh. What did we do between age zero to five? I said zero intentionally. When that child was a baby, and um, I, I read something about peekaboo. Hmm. When you're just looking into the eyes of the child and playing, relationship is building. Then it's that relationship that we have from zero to, you know, five, ten, that we can build on in latter times, where 
just with speaking to your child, the child is aligned. I'd like to invite parents to that part of life. Mm. Let's let's not say she's still small. He's still small. What does he know? When he's mm. older, I will talk about it. No, mm. let's start from zero to model, to love, to talk to, to explain things, to show the example. And then we will reduce the having to correct, the you know, use the rod to, you know, to have to bend the child and all of that. Mm. There's a big opportunity there and I'm calling every parent to look at that opportunity. So are you trying to say that if you properly raise the child from zero to five years old, that you may not necessarily have to use the rod on the child afterwards? I'd like to say zero to I like to say primary school age 0 to 10, 0 mm. to 12, because that's when it's an active, actively called the word child before mm. we get to tween and then we get to teen. I'm saying, yes, if you do a very good job there, I'm mm. not saying in every case the child will not um, yeah. Yes, but you will find that whatever you plant, if you plant yams, you'll reap yams. You plant, <laughs> mm. if, you plant, if you plant oranges, you don't reap yams. You know, a lot of us usually, like me now, big auntie, I have a niece, and I'm always like, oh, she doesn't know anything at this age, you know, and all of that. So does it mean that if I actually start doing those, making those corrections or speaking to the child as an adult or trying to explain things to the child, it will go a long way. Are you trying to say the child can assimilate and understand everything I'm saying at that time? You know, children really understand a lot, but we must make it age appropriate. Mm. The child is zero to two. They'll ask you some funny questions. Mom, why do you do this at this time? Mm. Why did you tell dad that? Sometimes you think they're not picking it up, but if you True. think back mm -hmm. at your own, to your own childhood, you remember that some things people thought you didn't know. Yeah. You really knew. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. maybe not talking to them as an adult, but explaining things to them at their own stage and age and making sure that their questions are answered and that you always open the door for this is how it should be. Mm. You're writing on the tablets of their heart. Just by the law of planting and harvesting, that's mm. what you'll get um, when the child is grown. Okay, now let's talk about the adverse effect of the rod. I keep using the word rod. I don't want to go into a uh, popular lingo, a bit thing, the bit thing of life. <laughs> so share with us um, the adverse effect of the rod on children, especially in extreme cases. Does it affect them in any way in the future? Especially when they, as well, are trying to raise their own families. So I've listened to people who are experts with parenting and child care and child development. And beginning to hear a lot and a lot about the fact that that shouldn't be the focus, mm. okay? That shouldn't be the focus because of the, the reasons you have mentioned and more. Um, I must say, one of the things I've resolved to do as someone who works with women is to help women understand that, okay, we have our job, our busy lives, mm. our career, you know, our hustle, and parenting, being a mother of uh, children, running your you know, business or being mm. your job is not the easiest uh, mix, yeah. yes, but there's wisdom that can help you, you know, uh, take that journey. Um, but if we want relationships that will count on later in life, if you want a child that's 30, 40, 50 mm. and will have good memories of childhood and you can have that long-term family relationship, then we must begin to invest early in a love relationship with a child. And love is not only about pampering. Mm. It's about wholesome development. We must be there for that child. Now, even if you had to correct firmly, the child will understand the intention was good. Mm. But when there was no emotional investment and you begin to tell me that this thing is for me, I find it hard to wrap my head around that. Even as an adult, right? If you're working with a colleague or boss and everything you get is negative and then he says i'm doing it for you you find it hard to even as an adult right mm -hmm. so yeah the key focus again talking about parenting and resourceful parenting is let's go back some people think there's nothing i can do there's a whole lot you can do some people think oh i don't have time how am i going to do this it's for, remember i said we must be lifelong learners to be resourceful people yeah. it's for going to learn how exactly can i juggle my very busy wife mom career woman life mm. and raise a strong family wholesome wholesome balanced family that i can ride on till the end of my life and it's possible mm. 
Mm. It's possible. And that's, that's the place to point all of us to. Let's start right early. And if you've um, had your children and they are grown and you've said, oh my, I mean, you can start today. Um, there's, hope. there's hope. Okay, let me give out the phone lines. 009 234 Feel free. Questions? Comments? If you are also a mother, you want to say something about what we're talking about, feel free to call. If not that, you know, we're here to take your calls and your comments. Now, they say opposite attracts. Um, and that is why in some homes you see the father attracted, the, the daughter attracted to the father or not attracted per se, always with the father. The son is always with the mom. There's some, there's some relationship thing going on there. And so the question is, is this a healthy mix? And is it possible for any of the children at some point to feel that the other parent um, doesn't love him or her? Because sometimes there's this, um, of, is it emotional attachment to one one parent? And then I'm feeling like, oh, mommy doesn't love me or daddy doesn't love me, as the case may be. So is that a healthy mix? Should it be encouraged? So that's uh, like three questions in one, but mm -hmm. I'll try to take one, <laughs> one at a time. I was in a group of teachers, in a, a seminar for a group of teachers, a workshop for a group of teachers. And mm -hmm. I heard a school head say that it's something that has been studied, the relationship between the dad and the daughter. Hmm. Yeah, seeming to sound like it's something that can be traced to some science. Okay, hold on. Let's take this call. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to the show. What's your name? Good morning. This is Emmanuel calling from mainland. All right, Emmanuel, go ahead. Do you have a question or you want to make a comment? Mm, yes, first of all, good morning to your guests. Good morning. And, uh, it's good to have you on the show talking about resourceful parenting. It's very much uh, evident. The, the implication of it is evident in our society today. And it will be of great meaning to those who hope to be parents someday, and even for parents who people who are already parents in the moment to edit their their parenting uh, abilities, <laughs> skills, and updates it if it is uh, becoming obsolete. All right, Manu, so, do you have a question? Yes. Go ahead. In a situation, I know the, the situation is kind of messy anyway, but uh, it's not impossible to fix. Uh, because I happen to know a man who has a daughter. So the man oftentimes make complaints. He has beaten, he has he has spoken to the child, he has cancelled. The girl the girl is twelve years, but she's turning to something else. And she's uh, running after boys. Sometimes he wants keep sleeping at home. The grandma is blind, kind of and the girl is kind of so the dad oftentimes come home late. So in this uh, scenario and setting, how do we can you just give him some tips, some guidelines how to remedy the uh, situation? Yeah, the, the, the situation. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Emmanuel. She will take your question now. So we'll take Emmanuel's question and come back to the other question. So go ahead. Okay. Emmanuel, you see, you've painted a situation that um, it can be helped. Um, she's 12. It can be helped. But the important thing now, because of all the, the scenario you've painted has quite a, a lot in there, is to have the, is to suggest to the parent to speak to a counselor who can understand the full context and um and prefer and guide the family into a solution but um there is hope for the girl yeah and um if if hope if, if a solution is sought right away she can really be helped and that right early okay all right i hope that answers emmanuel's question so back to the other question is it a healthy mix okay so i said i was sitting with a group of teachers and yes. some head teacher said something about the relationship between uh, father and daughter and it sounded as if she's saying it's traceable to some science. Mm. So, yeah, it's there and it can be leveraged for the benefit of the children with a good 
understanding between father, mother, mm -hmm. um, you know, on how that can be balanced and used to help the child grow. Mm -hmm. um, yes, those mothers have some relationship with their sons in the same way. Yeah. I mean, you see, you see some of that. But it's important in terms of raising resourceful families to help our children understand that we love them and that there is no imbalance. Um, I'm th I really f believe very strongly that we can raise um, families where everybody feels loved and accepted and that there is enough space in the sky for all birds to fly. By that I mean I can love you that much and I can love the other child that much and my heart is not exhausted. Oh, That's so a can, there should be a balance. That's a healthy way to, to, to work on that. Okay, now most parents out of their out of love or the need to help their children avoid some certain mistakes, they end up over pampering them and they grow up not having a mind of their own. How much is too much when it's when one is trying to guide your child? You know, what level of mistakes can they make before you step in as a parent? Um that's key to resourcefulness in this area. Um that it's good to guide a child, but sometimes you have to in helping raising a resourceful family at some point you have to based on the age allow the child to try hmm. if the child doesn't begin at the age where he's supposed to do a certain uh, responsibility the yeah. child doesn't begin to try and navigate that and understand how to you have to help the child throughout life which is not uh, within resourcefulness hmm. so um from when they are young we need to know what's appropriate for their age and at that age guide them into getting their hands into it and finding ways out we will help mm. but we have to allow them get into it so they grow and they can become um, independent at the stage where they should so be what independent. level of mistakes what you know my mom let me give you a story <laughs> 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 now i have to come out my way to say this but let me just tell the story my mom said while i was going out, i think i was a year or two and that uh, they were always they went to the village i think of my dad's burial or so and there was this um candle lights somewhere in the house and they kept every time i want to put my hand in the fire every time i want to put my hand so they kept moving me away so the moment she turned i think she stopped looking at me and i went there and i put my hand and i started crying you know she was, exactly i put my hand in the fire and then i started crying so that was hurtful to me at that time so the question is what level of mistakes should parents allow their children that was a mistake my mom allowed me although it was not intentional because she turned you know that was a mistake I made. So what level of mistakes should our parents allow us to make before they say, okay, come here, let me help you? You, you, you know, it will be difficult to um, put a degree because of the many things children will have to do. Yeah. But I will say to any mother living in 2022, keep your eyes on the child, right? But allow the child to do what the child has to do within your supervision. Yeah. Most children will be either at home or at school. I mean, within the home, the vicinity of the home, mm. or somewhere you allow them to go to, or they'll be in school. They never leave supervision. So even when they are trying and they are going that far, your eyes should be on what, you know, otherwise you'll have to spend money, resources, mm. uh, remedying a situation. And, and uh, you may be picking up a bad situation that may leave a scar. So our eyes should... Be always on be on the child yes not not pump over pampering mm. but there should be supervision because like you said that's a child mm. okay now in trying to build a resourceful family at what point should you start introducing your children to certain skills um, that may come in handy for them at some point coding baking hair making and the likes you know so um because this day before you even take that question i have an issue with students pupils of students going to school for three months and they get a holiday and their parents ship them back to <laughs> lessons, um, summer coaching and all of that. I feel they should take out that time to learn a skill or learn something else that is outside the classroom. So at what point or at what stage in a child's life should parents start introducing those little, little skills that they can pick up and learn? Actually, the school system begins to introduce these children to it, um, at least by primary school. Yes. Before primary school, they get them to learn just um, skill. economics. No, before primary school, maybe it's just motor skills, you know, use of using their hands, color, mm -hmm. appreciating colors, mm -hmm. and all of that. Those bases that those other skills will build on. But from primary school, they get into home economics, mm -hmm. um, games, and, you know, coding, and all of that. Um, and I would say, 
as a parent, what I found work for me is to work with, is to understand what the school is doing and make choices in the school's program that feed into what I want, what I think will be great for my child. Mm. And um, well, for some mothers who have to be at work during holiday and there are no house helps, you've made a point. Do you want to send the children back for pure mathematics and English? That's, I mean, in the world of today, the world is not about mathematics mm -hmm. and English alone, with, <laughs> even though mathematics and English is very important. Yeah. But the parents needs to then do that diligence of finding out what will be offered. What's a safe place I can send my child to safety is extremely important. Mm. What will be offered? What are the skills my child is sh showing? I don't throw my child into something. It does go and spend time when the child has no aptitude for and the child just be struggling through. So what do I, what, where do I see this child going? What are the skills I think I want to um, get this child to learn? And from primary school, they are picking up coding, they are picking up baking, hair making, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, on to secondary school. So, yeah, from primary school, these skills are coming in. Okay. Now, um, like, like we established earlier, children learn by imitation. They learn by watching that their mommy do a couple of things in the house and they try to pick up those traits. What about a situation whereby one of the spouse or spouses goes to work and the other one is just at home um, doing nothing? Um, do, you, do, do you see a problem there? So that question could have two answers. For one, uh, I mean, this is not a recommendation. This is what exists. Mm -hmm. So there are some women who are fully home managers based on the design of the family okay. uh, for whatever reasons they have. Um, in that sense, if such a one is listening to me, my advice is keep learning. Be a lifelong learner. At least you should add value to the members of your family and you should run your home effectively, yeah. right? So you are able to support your family to win. Um, and then if that's the plan of that family, be a value adder in, within that plan. Add, upskill yourself, learn, be on top of your what the world demands of you at 2022, yeah. Don't be laid back. Um, and then if you are the, so if you are the w woman who can work, I'd say, um, by all means, find some, there's always something you can do. There are four or five things I want to quickly call such a woman's attention. So there's yourself, hands, feet, that can do a lot. Mm -hmm. There is your, there, M, myself, M, man, you have people who can either recommend you, put you on a network that can, you know, who can support you. You have material. Everybody has something. A little bit of oil, or a little bit of flour, mm. or the combination of two that can make something, or something around you, some tools you've had, or something. There's material we can use. There's minutes. There's time. You can blog. You can, you know, you can work remotely. You know, you, we have all of those M's that you can use to, to add value. Mm. So every woman should be encouraged in whatever state you find yourself is to be the best of that person you can be and add value to that family. Yeah. Okay. So that's, um, tell us about the work you do with Preneurial. What do you do and how can my listeners benefit from it? Okay, so I lead Preneura, Preneura, P-R-I-N-I-O-R-A, Preneura Limited. And Preneura was basically established to ennoble women, to help women find the potentials hidden within them and release it and actualize it. So we work from helping you discover what you can do to be resourceful, to contribute to your family, to gain fulfillment and to be economically empowered. That way we will build strong families and we'll build strong, a strong society. Secondly, Preneura is into helping women learn homemaking in a methodical way. We teach you how to run a home. If you were, didn't have the opportunity either with mom mm. or you've been away at school boarding, into university and yeah, you're about to build your own home and you're saying, look, I want to get it right. Preneura offers you classes that help you get that competency in a practical and interesting way. Hmm. That sounds, this is the first time I'm hearing an organization that does this. Uh, yes. That sounds yes. Um, Well, there are a few that do, but I think in Nigeria, I've hmm. not uh, run into one. Interesting. <laughs> That's interesting, truly. Really. Yes. Okay, now let's go back to... And very helpful, uh, I wanted to add. Hmm. Let's go back to some of the other issues we were looking at earlier. Now, there are some homes that um, their parents can afford, the house manager or house help, um, nannies, as the case may be. At what point 
do you do, do you leave all the work for the nannies or do you try to implicate your children into the chores and say you do these chores even if there is a nanny to do them you know what is what what is balanced or what helps when raising a resourceful family so some families by principle decide they don't want to have helps um at Quinora, one of the things we teach women is surviving or living happily without a domestic help um there are things you can do, simple things. Uh, some are not that simple, but there are simple <laughs> things you can do to make life happen and you have a life and you are happy with, without a domestic help. But if you have a domestic help, also we also teach women how to find a valuable, helpful, supportive domestic help. Um, it, it may not always be the case, but yes, you can do your own due diligence. Yeah. Um, and if you have a domestic help, and plan what the help does properly you can get the value and also plan to have your child learn and grow i always have this one that the child of the help would know to do something my child needs to know to, how to do the thing mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so um one mom said at 10 i introduced my child to washing her clothes you know putting her you know some level of skill preparing her for independence life in secondary school mm. even though they were helps and you can lovingly make the two of them even work together on age appropriate things the child is doing yeah. and make sure that you're keeping an eye on that child developing right and um, um picking up her own personal skills while the house help or the domestic help is getting the family run without teachers mm. yeah so sweeping um, making her bed, um, dishes, yeah, even watching. You know, at some sometimes you don't you don't want them to get near the fire. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're you're rushing just for time. stand somewhere and look at me. Yes, <laughs> and that goes a long way. She loves to stay. She loves to be in the kitchen. She gets mm -hmm. familiar, and then as she grows, she says, "Oh, mom used to do it this way. Let me try." Okay, this is my own way, but she's she's not an alien to mm -hmm. you know making dishes for the family. So that way, she feels empowered. I tell my daughter. I'm empowering you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a form of empowerment to enable anyone. So it's not it's child. not suffering. I'm not trying At to all. punish you. I'm empowering you. <laughs> I, I I say to them, my children, whether male, female, mm -hmm. when you grow or you're in university and you have to cook, mm -hmm. there will be no help. You need to be empowered, or you know, when you have your home or your spouse maybe is on shift or something, mm -hmm. and you need to rustle up a meal, you don't want to feel weak and unable. So, being able to cook is an empower is is empowering your child. Mm. Yeah. I I usually say to people, friends around that um, cooking is not a gender thing. Everyone should know how to cook, and cooking is a survival skill, not a skill for just some for a particular gender. It's it's everyone needs to everyone eats. Sure. Everyone, <laughs> everyone should know how to cook. Yeah. Okay. Zero zero nine two three four five nine one three zero zero nine one nine one three nine one three zero zero nine triple two zero nine one three i'll take them again zero eight zero nine two three four five nine one three zero eight zero nine one nine one three nine one three zero eight zero nine triple two zero nine one three if you have comments if you have questions feel free to call and i'll be here to take your calls now there's another issue that happened i was going i said i was going to be very very practical about today's show so that we can get the best with a lot of examples i used to live in a big compound and um i had a neighbor who um the parents were this very strict parents no no going out, no earrings, no trousers, no this, no makeup, no that, no that, no that, no that, no this. And they have teenagers, I don't know, they, they were maybe 16, 17, 18 or thereabouts. Then they were in the university. Now, when they come back home, they're always indoors, everything, everything. Then one day I stumbled on one of the daughter's pictures on social media. And it was a direct, it was a direct opposite of the life that she lives when she's around in the compound when she is with her parents. What are some of this? What does caging do to a child? It's what effect does it have to a child on a child rather? So you know, yeah. So we are crossing somewhere between resourcefulness and mm -hmm. parenting. Yes. But I'd like to look at that um, in the context of our discussion. One of the things you have to do for children talking about raising a resourceful family mm. is 
you know, I talked about model. We we initially talked about modeling the right the values that will help that child to yeah. grow, but I've I've mentioned and I've emphasized the importance of I mean hand holding, or you know loving or being in an intentional engaging relationship from zero. Hmm. Whatever values you think will help the child in the child's life, we should have been engaging on it from age zero. So the child can ask why. Hmm. Why not? Some of our parents do not like us asking why. <laughs> they um, say, stop asking me questions. That's very rude. It's rude to ask questions. No, no, no. It is, uh, yes, of course, I teach, we teach our children to be respectful in asking but, but why but why not mm. if it's asked in polite context but okay but mom why why that why do we have to you know like someone would say no offense mom but why do we have to do it this way <laughs> you know that's polite because okay. that child has to know that um it, when you get to the, your boss's office i mm. say sir why it won't be acceptable so there has to be that balance in helping even that that in talking about resourcefulness that child needs to know how to interact with you hmm. in the right way so the child can interact out there in the work world or in the resourcefulness world hmm. and, and and break through you know so the, the thing is if we leverage that 0 to 12 0 to 16 hmm. before the child leaves home and we are engaging constantly. Of course, we may we need to understand the generation we were raised in and the generation the child is going to be raised in yeah. and what the priorities are. But the key thing is we can, yeah, we may give in some, we may accept some, but if we think these things are things the child should know, we should engage. So the child understands. The child is not just acting, but the child is fully um, on board with why we mm. think it should be this way. We will reduce such... Uh, you know, challenges or frictions that can arise from such things mm. with such a relationship earlier on. So resourcefulness is, and, and the right outcomes is actually about starting early and engaging our children early on the kind of skills, the kind of behaviors, the kind of, you know, talents, the kind, whatever they need to do to succeed as they go in life. Yeah. So at what point um, can parents retire and say to themselves that I have raised a resourceful child? I've raised an awesome child. Do you think there's any retirement or it's a lifelong thing? <laughs> no, it, it shouldn't be a lifelong thing. I mean, at some point, a parent should sit back and say, oh, thank God I've, I've, I've done this um, and this child has turned out right. Mm. So, yeah, a, when a girl is stepping out into university and she's going to live away from home, that control is, is limited, you know. It's more like, okay, she's gone, but you still keep a healthy loving relationship so she still feels like connecting with home mm. but by the time she gets married <laughs> she's someone <laughs> else's mm. so yeah at that point you're just sitting and praying and hoping all works well. but if you did your homework right mm. that child becomes a resourceful woman when she begins to build her own home interesting so let's wrap this up your final thoughts my final thoughts is that in the times we live in we live in a time i mean think about covid think about all the things that have happened in the mm. world in the last few years there have been a lot of things coming up that we didn't even anticipate yeah. resourcefulness is a must-have for the family mm. and so we we talked about we as women we as parents need to up our resourcefulness game by being lifelong learners and being willing to try and having a positive mindset to things and finding out how can we navigate the situation and then we've said a lot about the fact that we need to model resourcefulness positive mindset positive mm. outlook to yeah. our children and raise resourceful children if we want to relax and have that uh, happy ending that mm. you've talked about so yeah we we, we are, I, i'm hoping that everyone who listens to this show is this goes back and says i can do something about my situation i can use a few resources i have at hand to navigate what i'm in right now Wow, thank you so much. I had fun talking about this. In fact, I have loads and loads of other questions, but time. Well, thank you so much for sharing from your world of knowledge and experience with us. And I do hope that our listeners at home have benefited from the interview. So until I come your way again next week, or oh, should it come your way again next week? Hopefully, do have a beautiful and a beautiful weekend. Bye. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are true. That's that was good. I, I, I didn't know if I should be looking there or I should be looking here. It is fine. It is.